something that we had uh, the approval of the minister we will avail the documentation it was signed by the honorable minister kaseja himself and was witnessed by the permanent secretary secretary to the treasury then Commissioner, and that document would you is like available. to read also subsection 2 Thank you, Council. Yes, it says subsection 2. The expenditure of the authority shall be uh, a charge on a consolidated fund. So the first procedure is that, yes, uh, the minister has authorized uh, under subsection B and C for these monies indeed to be included or to be utilized by the authority. And then uh, the other processes for uh, this to be included will then be uh, sought from Parliament. That was a point, Honorable Chair, I was making in terms of the funding that the authority may get in addition to the funds that have been uh, approved by the Parliament. I thank you. Vice Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, from the explanation of the, 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 the uh, auditor asked, these explanations, did you present them to the auditors? And what did they tell you? Because you had an opportunity to clear that at the exit meeting. Was that presented? Because their query is, this was not, we don't have evidence. It's, so I still come back, really. What happened? Did you explain these issues to them? And what did you, what did they say? What did you agree in the exit meeting? Actually, that would make our work very easy because we're not coming here to audit anyway. To be charged on the consolidated fund. Any sum of money due, for, due from the government shall be charged on the charged and paid out of the consolidated fund without further appropriation, where the money is for the repayment of loans or payment of interest. Hmm. That's a different one. Yes. Let's stick to for section the, 15, hmm. uh, subsection 2 which says the expenditure of the authority shall be a charge on the consolidated fund, juxtapose that against uh, Treasury instructions of 2017, paragraph 24.6.2, which says the accounting officer should ensure that all planned development partner disbursements under his or her vote are included in the vote budget estimates that are appropriated by Parliament. So, as the Vice Chair is saying, uh, one, you didn't have avail the explanations you're giving to the Auditor General's uh, team. But two, this must have been, again, part of your budget which was submitted to Parliament. Because as an entity, even with your ministry, you don't have authority to receive any money from anywhere outside the knowledge of Parliament. In other words, Parliament is meant to appropriate money which is collected by URA, to different entities, but also any loans, grants, and so on, they are to government of Uganda and with specificity to an entity. So because it comes to government of Uganda, Parliament has got to appropriate that too. So you people should have submitted that. You did not. So saying that uh, approval, that because this you know, agreement was signed by the Minister of Finance, it does not suffice because the Minister of Finance is not the one that prepares the budget of URA. It is URA led by the CG that prepares your budget, which you submit to finance, and then finance brings it eventually to parliament. Madam Head Legal, I don't know if you're getting that point. So you cannot say that Ministry of Finance makes a budget for you. No. The budget is to be made by you. And you should have incorporated this element in your budget, which you did not do. But let, let the CG first respond, then I come. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, for this guidance. Um, we appreciate uh, the guidance that you're giving and uh, would like to step back and see whether we actually captured this in our budget for the financial year 2020, 2019 2020, because that's the period when this loan was promised by the World Bank. And should we find we did not, then we definitely take the advice of the honorable members and we'll do that going forward. I think we could have easily been under the impression that it is 
either loans that have to be paid back or the consolidated uh, vote that must go through Parliament. So we appreciate the guidance, but also just to confirm whether we have this captured in the earlier budgets, because you realize the confirmation of World Bank was before the period of audit, which the Auditor General looked at. Let's look at this and we can give a, a final submission on this tomorrow. But, but honestly, we, we, we can see those documents eventually if they do exist. But the yes. point is, at the time of the audit, you did not avail them to the Auditor General's team. We, and for we, us, we, you cannot now begin to bring all your financials and then we do audit. The Auditor General is an officer of Parliament. They do that work on our behalf as Parliament. And ours is to scrutinize those documents, dig deeper. So if you did not avail them at the time to the Auditor General's team, yes, even if you bring them now, that's okay. But you escaped scrutiny of the Auditor General by not availing them. And that's why what I'm not understanding why. Because you had two opportunities to do that. During the audit and then during the exit meeting. And at each of those instances... For the current year 2021-2022, the entity budgeted 112.42 billion for the acquisition and implementation of IT systems and equipment and received 112.42 billion. A review of the ICT activities implemented revealed the following. On procurement, a stock development and use of the software and IT systems and equipment. The IT systems developed and I'm ready to go to that. It was observed that eight IT projects with a total of 2.57 billion were not implemented within the required timelines as specified in the inception reports and contracts. Two, one system, ERT, was procured by the entity when they are existing, when they were existing within other governments, that is MDAs and local governments, indicating a possibility of duplication. ERP duplicates the government IFMS. Non-compliance may lead to duplication of acquisition, procurement of non-compatible solutions and equipment, and general deviation from the government's efforts to rationalize resources for better service delivery. Management explained that the delays arose from COVID, that caused the delay, and service delivery as well as multi-year projects, e-tax 2, and data concern. Efforts are being made to expedite the procurement. I think the issue here is first, what was the cost of this ERP? And then, because we know now most of this, the issue of duplication, because everything on IT now go through the NITA. You must work with the NITA. That's why to avoid the duplication, we just wanted clarity from the IT on the, on the issue of the IT from the Uganda Revenue Authority. The other one was on the ICT governance. A review of the ICT governance structure of the entity revealed that out of the total approved established positions in the structure for the ICT department of 202, only 153, 76% positions were filled. Gaps in the ICT, ICT staff structure negatively affects IT service delivery. I think we also want now the current position. What's the position have you recruited to fill in this guy, the, the gap? I think those are the two issues on this that we had on that. Okay, let's get a uh, response. And the other one, why, 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 why use, I think the, the, the difference in what you use vis-a-vis -vis the, the IFMS. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, the, the first part is on the uh, ERP, the Enterprise Resource Planning System that we use vis-a-vis -vis using the IFEMIS. Uh, Honorable Chair and Members, the IFEMIS system uh, is mainly for uh, finance management. It's the central uh, system for most government MDAs uh, for managing the disbursement of finances. Whereas on the side of the ERP, the functionality is much broader than just the finance. It has modules for human resource management, uh, for uh, leave management. There is an annex that lists, Annex 5, which lists uh, what the ERP gives us, which we cannot find in IFEMIS. 
Annex 5, page 9. So that explains the reason why uh, we are using the ERP uh, instead of IFEMIS. IFEMIS would only be a subset of the ERP. And in terms of following procedure in acquiring these systems, Honorable Chair and Members, I'd like to confirm Maybe, 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 maybe uh, Chairman, Auditor General needs to confirm because they are the ones who raised this matter, because they audit all these entities. The Auditor General should be able to, because if that's the, if that's the, if that's the, 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 the answer, why would they have to raise it up? So maybe that's why we need to hear from yeah, so the, the, the major because issue, did, which uh, Auditor General's office should clarify, you're duplicating a system. So there is IFMIS, uh, which can do what it is that you're doing with ERP, but you still chose to procure ERP. How much did we spend on ERP as URA? Um, I'd like to ask Finance. Finance to confirm the figure. Um, <coughs> the implementation of the ERP cost uh, 32 billion, covering all the modules that have been listed in uh, Annex 5 and also covering three years of support and maintenance post-implementation. Okay, so 32 billion, the Auditor General feels there is a system within government which we spent money on to do all of this work, but you spent another 32 billion to acquire another. It could be seen as negatory expenditure. So Auditor General could clarify. Uh, this was embarked on in 2017. So I don't know at what, 20, 2016, but acquired in 2017. So I don't know at what point the other systems is mentioning if they were in place. For example, I know that the Ministry of Public Service is trying to procure a human resource management system, which they would recommend to be deployed across government. So if we are to rely on utilizing such a system, either would have to hold and not apply what we are using now and which we embarked on so many years ago. But Honorable Chair and Members, uh, for confirmation, what the ERP does, the IFMIS cannot do, especially on these modules that relate with human resource management. P paint for us a picture uh, in, in a manner that is understandable to a, to a layman, you know, uh, technically, what are those things that you're saying if Ms. cannot do, that only ERP can do? Thank you, Honorable Chair. With your permission, let me ask my Commissioner for IT to break down these uh, functionalities in an easier way for everyone to understand. Robert, if you can. Uh, thank you, CJ, and Honorable Chair. Uh, first of all, let me qualify that when we come up with a user requirement for an IT system, we send this to NITA for approval. And part of the job that they do is to assess every other system in government to see if there's duplication. And if they feel that there is no duplication, they give us permission to go ahead and do the procurement. And this followed that procedure. So uh, I respect the opinion of the Auditor General, but the substantive opinion on systems that can be bought and not be bought comes from NITAU, and they gave us permission to do this. Uh, secondly, can just you, before you we, proceed, do you we, have that uh, document of them giving you permission? Yes, we do. We can Please avail. capture it as uh, one of the documents you bring tomorrow. Excellent. We'll do that. I don't know. Mr. Commissioner General, who on your team is capturing the documents we require? Okay. Uh, secondly, like we were saying, the, the scope of uh, functions that are in IFMIS is very limited compared to what uh, is in the ERP. Uh, for example, uh, if you look into Annex 5, where we break down the different functions that are in the ERP. Uh, the self-service HR is, is basically, as a staff, I should be able to lodge my leave 
I should be able to put my bio data in the system uh, for the different functions that's used for uh, approvals that I need from my manager for the different operational uh, activities that happen. Uh, that's what that module does. Leave management, recruitment processes, payroll, so that you receive your pay slip. Uh, yeah. Digitally, uh, yeah. those are I, kind of functions. I think to cast in short, I see the chair asked, what are those things which ARP does, which if Miss doesn't? They Just pick those ones, which, which, does not, which are not covered by if Miss, which Honorable, ARP. this is one of them that I was explaining, but I've been asked to break it down so that it's understood by all yeah, of I us. Yeah, I can see here they are broken down, because, but we've also had him talk about if he is covering do human, uh, human resource. So what's the difference bet between what you are talking about, human resource, and, uh, and what? Hey, and what is also uh, what is <laughs> all right, uh, human resource, uh, self-service human resource module. What's the difference between the two? And Chair, I wanted to compliment uh, Honorable Okupa. Uh, looking at the observations of the Auditor General, you know, don't confuse us. Uh, the Auditor General is saying, he, he looked at, uh, I made, he says, he made, I made my assessment based on PSST and Nita U guidance on ICT development. Mm -hmm. And one of the critical issues that the Auditor General mentions out is, is, is that uh, is that some of these efforts is to avoid the further development of isolated ICT systems. Correct. Now, you want to say you are an A wants to isolate itself from other MDAs and other, uh, other, other, other entities. You know, and yet Delta General is looking at part of this guidance that avoids further iso isolation, uh, further isolated ICT systems. It, it, it becomes a problem. That, that you want to develop something unique away from other entities. When, 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 as, uh, when, when, as when, when I read the Otajino's report, it, it talks about that, first of all, such continuous procurement uh, uh, would, would amount to general deviation from the government's effort to rationalize resources for better service delivery, among others. Yes. For you just want to focus on investment of resources. And, and looking at the, the comments of the Dr. Geno, he's also talking about uh, the issues to do with the contract section department, follow up of these contracts, how are they evaluated, how are they assessed, and, 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 and there's a lot of critical aspects covered here. So be on record, you want to isolate URA from other government entities, or you want to rationalize, because this is what the Otajino is quote, quoting here. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, echoing what the CJ said earlier, we've been uh, forerunners on deployment of technologies, especially in government. And when you think about an enterprise resource planning tool, it is a tool that helps you to make sure that all the functional modules within an institution speak to one another, meaning that they should be integrated. Now, when we jump and look at what government is doing right now and trying to uh, limit ICT expenditure, uh, they've also decided generally to procure different systems that are shared platforms. Now, to arrive at a system that should be able to speak to each other in terms of the function we use within your A means that these systems must be integrated. As it stands right now, they're disjointed as it stands right now. And where we are is that these systems are just coming up. We have been with the ERP for quite a long time. And so this is what we are saying. Do we stop running our operations with the systems that we have in the hope of proc government procuring systems and eventually integrating them? Or do we keep going with what we do? Now that decision is a decision that is made by Nita U because they have full scope of whatever is going on across the government, where the procurements are, what integration levels have been achieved, and therefore are they ready to support a mission critical uh, function like URA. And as we stand, I don't think they have made that opinion, and that's why they give us permission to continue using the system that we have. I saw internal audit wanted to say something. Thank you, Chair. And if you can allow me to give uh, a historical perspective. Previously, we had scattered systems in finance, in procurement, in planning. We're using the Excel sheets and many other areas. We had challenges with leave management in HR. HR was basically manual. 
and we are using our own internally developed systems that we are doing specific functions for HR. So we, 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 we took a decision as management in terms of integrating, because at the end of the day, all the processes lead into financials. Yeah. So we took a decision. Instead of keeping the isolated systems, let's integrate. And after our assessment, a full suite of ERP was the right solution. Now, these are decisions that were made b b before 2016. And we went through the process of getting funding through Ministry of Finance. Our first attempt, I think we didn't get the funding. It's only, I think, in 2015, 14, 15, or 15, 16, when we got the funding and we commenced the process. At that time, there was no requirement for entities to submit their IT procurements to NITA U. It wasn't there. So we embarked on the journey and implemented, successfully, we implemented the ERP. And as a result of that implementation, Mr. Chair and members, we were invited by the Ministry of Public Service to support them in the implementation of the human capital management solution. Even the, the procurement of uh, the e-procurement e system, we equally gave support. And I recall, I think in 2013-14, the World Bank and the PPDA visited the URA to look at a very small solution we were implementing with the local support, they were local Ugandans. So after going through all these you know, uh, separate systems, it was only right, given that our operations are wide, and in order to build more efficiency, we agreed to implement an ERP. But I can tell you that at that point in time, we went through the approval process through the normal budgeting process. It's only after later that Auditor General now was looking at IT-wide, I think it was a thematic audit, looking at the use of IT in all entities. And they raised the observation that URA can actually utilize the IFMIS. But like the CG accounting officer has indicated, the, e the ERP we implemented was looking at very many aspects of the URA operations, and they're all integrated into one suit. And that is what we, 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 that's what we, I think the commissioner for IT is indicating as, well, I don't want to brag, but we have been leaders in deployment of IT in the government entities. Oh, no, and procedure, many people- Procedure, chair. If I could conclude, general, sir. No, no, just on procedure. Yes, the Auditor General specifically on page 10 says, the ERP duplicates the government IFMS. Now, Give a technical, a technical, a technical what, what's technical the point of the procedure? Of, of, of course, he's saying that he's trying to defend IFMS. And the Auditor General is saying it is a duopoly, uh, 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 he's defending ER, 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 ERP. And the Auditor General is saying it is a duplication of IFMS. I, IFMS. And specifically, uh, duplication means money was spent on, on, to procure something where already there was an option. It presupposes uh, irrelevant expenditure. <laughs> Oh, you go to expenditure. So you, 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 we need justification because this is quoted by the Auditor What's General. What's the point of procedure? Uh, chair, 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 technically, he is not competent to prove <laughs> eh, to, uh, and to defend what he's saying. Let, 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 we need technical proof. Yeah. You, no, no, no. You cannot, you, you cannot arrange verbally over something technically proved, and the Auditor General has, has provided a position. Okay. Where um, is the technical proof? Of, of course, the challenge is. Uh, you have ruled on your own point of procedure. <laughs> <laughs> but let's do this, because it's a serious issue, yeah? 32 billion shillings, we need to, on our end, understand and be certain this, this was not a negatory expenditure. Because the report is saying, you people procured a system, spent 32 billion shillings on it, and yet there was already a system you could work with. You are telling us that, no, the available system of IFMIS... ...pending at URA. We shall be asking very tough questions along the way. Uh, you better put on your patience courts. You'll need them. Because our duty is to find out. Even the littlest of things, we shall find out. So don't get irritated. Anyway, even if you do, there's no problem on our part. We shall ask nonetheless. Yeah? 
but we, we hope that you will be as honest as you possibly can. Where there are challenges, it's okay to say this was a mistake. We apologize, we shall do better, and we move to something else. It eases our work. Some of the entities you've seen us fight with is because somebody convinces you that this is color red. The opportunity to lead the, 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 the discussion. Uh, first and foremost, Please carry on, Honorable. Uh, I, I want to declare my interest first that uh, the organization before us, I served in that organization for about six years, but it's about 20 years now <laughs> since I left. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to put that on record. Uh, Chair, we are going to start with the There are, there are two reports here. There's one on revenue collection account, and then we have corporate services. Corporate services. And we shall start with the corporate services. Yes. A, a report. Of course, we, we, we do notice that uh, Uganda Revenue Authority made some, through the management response, made some comments to, to the Auditor General. But here, there today, we did ask them, we would proceed this way, Mr. Chairman, if it pleases you that we start from the revenue performance and ask them to give the response. Then I'll put the questions, supplementary questions, to the response that they have to the revenue performance. May, may, on the revenue performance. Maybe, Honorable, what, what we could do, uh, I don't know if your mic is on, by the way. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I was going to say that um, to analyze, you can put to them whichever question you like, and then they respond in whichever form. If we are not contented, we then have a follow-up. Problem, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we, we start with the, on page three on the revenue performance. I don't want to go into the other uh, issues. But according to the approved budget, the entity was supposed to receive 534 billion, 166 million, all of which was availed or warranted by the end of the year under review, representing a performance of 100 percent. As further noted that a total of 34.7 billion that had remained unspent in the prior year was retained by the entity. It was confirmed that the entity obtained authorization from the Ministry of Finance to retain the said funds. Now, I think the question we're putting is, the money that you retained it, you ask the Ministry of Finance to retain. What were these activities that suffered implementation? by this non-implementation of the 34 billion. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. And uh, let me first of all thank the Honorable Chair and members for giving us the opportunity to come before Kosase um, and in response to the opening remarks by the Honorable Chair I'd like to assure you that the team that have come leading from Uganda Revenue Authority are here to give uh, the honest truth and submissions to this Honorable Committee. Um, as you may know, Honorable Chair, we 
had written to you asking for a little more time, simply because uh, personally I was out of the country, and that's why the acting CG was communicating. But also being the end of the old, the previous financial year and the beginning of the new financial year, there were a number of activities uh, that had been lined up. That, but that notwithstanding, we put most of them on hold. And as I mentioned, some members are winding up what was pending and they'll be joining us. So my only appeal to you, Honorable Chair and members, for answers that we may not have immediately, it's not because we want to withhold some truth, but we will honestly ask for more time to get ourselves prepared and we'll submit within the allowed time by the committee. Maybe quickly on comment. that issue, Mr. C.G., do people call you CG at your office? Uh, CG for Commissioner General. Yes, I got that letter. And uh, challenges that communication asking for postponement came late. Because um, the clerk told me it was sent Friday 7 p.m. or thereabout after closure. So he could only see it over the weekend. It was difficult for us to schedule another entity. But we said, no problem. Where there's documents that we require, we can give you time to avail them. We are also human beings. We are understanding. So I don't know what image you people have of us. Okay? But uh, we, we do understand. Where there is a document that you would like time to get, we shall give you that time. I was only emphasizing that that time should not be abused. Some entities have abused that time. We agree in a day's time or two, and they spend two weeks, and then we end up having a fight. Yeah? So... That's all right. But uh, as people who run the entity, who got these reports earlier on, and who got our communication earlier, there's the basics that you should have. But where there's a particular document, because we shall be asking for various relevant documents, we shall avail time, and then you bring them. So that should be okay. Thank you very much, Chair. Now, directly go to go to the question uh, raised uh, by the Honorable... Um, Okupa. We, indeed, Honorable Chair and members, did not uh, acquire or implement all the projects that we had lined up for the financial year 2021-22. And the main uh, projects that were affected... Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm interjecting again. Yes. You are moving to absorption of funds. Yes. We wanted you to address us first on the government of Uganda receipts. That's, that was the first issue Honorable Cooper raised. So we, we are going to move to the absorption, but uh, we need you to throw light on, without the details yet, we'll get to those details. So the 34.7, 34, Point seven, okay, that remained and spent, and then uh, we'll see how we follow it up. But you can respond the way you are ready to. Maybe, maybe uh, chair, chair, maybe sorry, maybe chair. If I can start this way, was your budget adjusted because? Because the Saturday for no, I think before we get there, I think we answer that one first. <laughs> Give us the, the activities that suffered non-implementation as a result of that the Saturday four billion. So you can proceed as you had started. Okay, thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Member. Yes, I was saying that there are some activities that we are not able to implement for various reasons. Uh, most of them, uh, especially on the side of IT projects, uh, were disrupted by the, uh, by the previous lockdowns of COVID. And we were not able to implement some of those projects. And the list of the unimplemented projects uh, is found on page
page four of the main document. Uh, page four uh, of the main document and the reasons as well for the delay. As I mentioned already, a number of them were IT projects which could not be uh, procured in time. And um, what happened, these were carried forward. So we've implemented these in the last financial year. And the resources that were not spent, which I think was the next question, we wrote the Ministry of Finance asking for permission to retain. But that permission was granted subject to approval of Parliament. And when the approval of Parliament did not come through, those resources were returned to the consolidated account. Maybe before we get in there, now, when I look at a table, you see that table has a total of 56 billion, not 34. Can we now reconcile? Because the other one is talking about 34 billion, but that table, when you add them, it comes, it's 56 billion, 56.3. So which is which now? Uh, Honorable Chair, I'll ask uh, the AC of Finance uh, to comment on the numbers. Fifty-six, because the statement is talking. This figure should speak to one another. We have thirty-four. We have fifty-six. What was unspent? Because now, fifty-six is also now unspent. The opening statement is talking about thirty-four. So which is which was what was unspent? Was it thirty-four or fifty-six? Maybe just to add a little to our lead council's question. Number one, what was the budget? of URA, because as we understand it, it was 534.16 billion. I can be corrected by you people if you have a different figure. Now, when that budget was submitted and approved, URA then says, we have 34.7 billion, which we didn't use the previous year. Finance allow us to add it to our budget to make 568 billion. So our, our challenge here is you plan for 534 billion. Why, why did you not say, okay, the budget that we are forwarding to Parliament is of 568 billion. However, do appropriate 534 because we have a balance of 34.7. So it looks like you realize later that we have this 34.7. Let's find something to do with it, which you had not planned for, because your budget was 534 billion. How then do you get to want to add another 34.7 billion? Because if you, you had need for it, my thinking is you should have planned for it and had it included in your budget. So your budget should have been total 568. So what, what happened there? And then we shall get to the absorption issues. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Now, on as to why we did not have uh, a budget of 568, as you know, Honorable Chair and members, we, every time we present our budget uh, to the Finance Committee of Parliament, the committee and the entire parliament appropriate or give us what is available. And for every financial year, we always have a long list of unfunded priorities. So it's true that we needed much more than what was approved, uh, but we are given what was available, like all the other entities of government. Now, given the fact that we were just coming out of the COVID lockdowns, which had slowed processes like recruitment, which have an implication to the question asked by the honorable member, how does NSSF come from 
COVID um, because everything did not happen at the speed that it was anticipated. Whereas in the previous financial year, Parliament had appropriated for us a budget to recruit additional staff. And because we could not easily administer interviews of big numbers, when we sent out the adverts, we got overwhelming responses. And then we could not gather people together to be interviewed. We had to administer online interviews. And the processes took inevitably much longer than anticipated. So there were balances carried forward from that activity of recruitment. Some of it goes to NSSF, others goes directly to the wages. And so these are some of the unutilized resources, which we are now asking the Minister of Finance to allow us spend on unfunded priorities. They were important, they were submitted, but they had not been allocated funds. What budget did you submit to finance? What was the total? I will ask my SC Finance to comment if she has the figure offhand. But what I can comment, Honorable Chair, is that it was much bigger than the 34 that we are trying to utilize. Even with that, we were going to prioritize a few of the most important and funded priorities. Excuse me, do you, Chair. Do you have the figure, Madam? Excuse me. He said, I need better clarification from him. This is money that had been budgeted for, mm -hmm. for recruitment. And it was not what? But the way it's justifying as if it was unfunded priority, which is not true. Not so CG. That's why I want clarification from you. Was it among the unfunded priorities or it had been budgeted for and the recruitment was not done? It, it, had, been, it had been budgeted for, but it was not spent. Chair, Chair, can I, can I, Chair? Yes, please, Councilor. Yeah. Um, just to clarify, we are talking about two aspects. The auditor, auditor's observation relates to absorption in the year 21-2022. And the table uh, following on page 4 is an analysis of the absorption for the year 21-22. The lines where uh, not all the funds were utilized for that year, uh, the, or underspent for that for that year. The question uh, that uh, has been posed relates to 34.7, uh, which is funds that were unutilized the year before, and there is a schedule for it. It's not attached here, the 34. So the two numbers are different numbers. I'd like to request that we are allowed through chair to provide Audit, that share. Auditor General, can Auditor General clarify whether this Saturday 4 relates now to 2020-2021 or it is 2021-2022? Maybe Auditor General can clarify. It, it is either 34.7 or 56.3 because what you are a saying, the, the schedule provided here, the broken down schedule, totals to, actually it's in the Auditor General's report, 56.3 billion. But then there is 34.7 billion. So which is which? Thank you, Chair. The figure that we are looking at has the approved budget for the year under review as 534.16. And it was noted that there was a 34.7 billion which was brought forward from the previous year. It was an unspent balance. 34.7 yes, was unspent balance for the previous year in the year 2020-2021. And they requested for authority to retain it and add it on there budget for the year un under review, 2021-2022. Okay, and the 56.3 billion? The 56 is part of the schedule of the unspent balance of 125. From the five, now, from the, whole, from the total now of 534, 
plus 34, and then out of which they spent, I think we have moved ahead in trying to explain the 34. The, the, the 125 is the unspent money for the year under review, and they attached, we attached the areas which were affected, but we only highlighted the ones with big amounts. And so the, the whole schedule should have reflected 125, but we only picked out the bigger amounts and left out the others. So the 34 is the balance brought forward from the previous year. Okay, so just for clarity, the money that was not absorbed was a huge sum. However, they chose to retain a small fraction of that which was not absorbed, which is 34.7. Is that what you are saying? Chair, the 34 relates to the previous year. The previous year of 2020-2021. Okay. okay. It makes sense that, 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 that is, is clear now. Yeah. So now we are talking of the budget now of 568. So we go to the second point. We are going to, to the second point. Because it says, it says here, out of a total available funds, 568.87 billion received. The word here is received. Because the Commissioner General had alone said they, did, they, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were not granted. Because the Auditor General is saying that the entity obtained authorization from the Minister of Finance to retain the available funds. Because earlier on we were asking that we will need that letter. Uh, which the Minister of Finance gave to you for giving permission to retain. So now, this contradicts you with what you had earlier on said, that you had written to finance, and finance was supposed to, because Parliament is the one which has the powers to appropriate, and then uh, it was not granted, but there's a contradiction with the statement here. Here is saying the grants were received, and out of that now, 568, 440, 3.78 billion was spent by the entity, resulting now to an spent balance of 125 billion in, in, in that financial year, representing an absorption level of 78%. It was observed that the unspent funds were not swept back to the consolidated fund as required by the Public Finance Management Act. We shall come to that. But that clarified to us, first of all, did you receive the 568 or you did receive five? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Member. Um, yes, sorry about the, the mix-up on the two funds. For the 38, sorry, for the 34, we were granted permission to retain, and therefore it's part of what we utilized. Where we are not granted is in the last financial year. And I would ask SE Finance to confirm that position. So you are now confirming that your budget for 2021-2022 was 568.87 billion. Yes, Honourable. Okay. No. Okay. You want to respond? No. It is the same position. Just to say yes, uh, 568 is what we had having a carry forward of 34, and then the allocation for that year of 530, uh, 534. So the total gives us the 568. Uh, two, two quick follow-ups, uh, legal counsel. Yeah. So one, like I was saying earlier, your approved budget was 534. But then you said we have this 34.7 billion, please allow us to use it. I, I want to understand the legal provision under which we are operating, because the institution that appropriates money to entities in this country is Parliament of Uganda. Parliament of Uganda appropriated 534 billion to URA. But now URA is saying we have some unspent balance of 34.7 billion. Finance allow us to utilize this. As opposed to URA returning to Parliament, whether through the sectoral committee or through the ministry that supervises you, to come back to Parliament for appropriation. So you people decided on your own there with finance to 
carry out the appropriation mandate, which is not for you. It is for Parliament. But maybe you can guide me under which law you were proceeding, together with finance, to appropriate money to URA. Because as far as I know, only Parliament appropriates money. So if Parliament appropriated 534 billion, what should have happened is for that 34.7 billion which you had as balance to be swept back to the consolidated fund. And then you come back to Parliament and ask for more money to say, yes, we returned that money, but we need it. We have undealt with issues. Appropriate that money to us. You people decided to appropriate together with finance. Help me understand under what law that was done. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, we definitely appreciate and follow the rules concerning the appropriation of budget. I think on the issue of sweeping away automatically the funds that are not utilized, there is uh, an arrangement that some institutions have, and I will ask for the supporting documents. And URA is one of those institutions where money is not automatically swept at the end of the financial year. And I'm sure there is authority behind that. However, Honorable Chair, even that notwithstanding, we follow the rules of appropriation. And as you know, we do not directly uh, come to Parliament. We do this through the Ministry of Finance. So that's why we have to write at the end of the financial year asking finance uh, to seek approval of Parliament so that we can utilize those funds. And that's what we did in this particular year. We wrote to finance, and I'm sure finance uh, must have approached Parliament for a supplementary, and they gave us the permission to spend. And that's why I was drawing the contrast in the last financial year where we wrote to finance, and they even responded positively, but they said subject to approval. And when that approval was not granted, money was returned. So, Honorable Chair, the truth is that we have no separate law that we follow. We still follow the appropriation mandate of Parliament, and until Parliament has approved, that is when we spend. And when they don't, we still return the money uh, to the Consolidated Fund. So, you're sure that um, finance sought approval of Parliament for the 34.7 billion to be utilized by URA? I, I Are you cannot, sure or you're not I, sure? I said I, I assume, because I'm really not in, in that privileged position to know, but at least we got confirmation that we can go ahead and spend the money. Procedure? Yes, sir, Honorable Ababiku. Thank you, Honorable Chair. My procedural matter is based on what uh, a member has just raised. And I strongly believe for us to proceed well, we need to receive copies of the requests they made through finance. Then two, he must make a clear statement about the policies or the laws they used. Because they are the user entity. And saying that some of the entities have been allowed to keep their funds, not to be returned to the consolidated fund. As being the user, he must be able to tell us those provisions. And he cannot assume, because we believe he acted, he provided actions for the retention of the funds. So right, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, are we proceeding rightly without having those evidence laid before the committee. Thank you. I actually want to assist the CG because your legal department is not assisting you. So the URA Act, section 14, talks about revenue accrue, revenue to accrue to the consolidated fund. All revenue collected by or due and payable to the authority under this act shall be credited 
or be due and payable to the consolidated fund, except that the minister may from time to time authorize the authority in writing to retain a percentage of revenue collected by the authority as may be determined by the minister in order to enable the authority to meet its expenditure without interruption. But the total sum so authorized shall not in any financial year exceed the amount appropriated by parliament for the authority for that year and shall be set off against the amount so appropriated. I want to imagine that's the law under which you were proceeding. Two things are problematic though. Number one, that amount must be within what was appropriated by parliament. That's the law I just read, section 14. Number two, this law here, the URA Act, is subject to the Public Finance Management Act, which is clear on how appropriation is done. Ultimately, the bug stops with Parliament. Yeah? That's where we are now having a problem. Of course, you're saying you don't know if the Minister of Finance did seek the approval of Parliament. That we shall not put to you. We shall put to the Minister of Finance, because we shall summon him to come to this committee. But what is for you to answer is why you requested to retain money which was not within what was appropriated by Parliament. Because before you even put in a request, it must be within the ambit of Section 14. I don't know if you get it or your legal department would like to, to assist. But you get the issue I'm raising. Yes, Honorable Chair. And I'll ask the legal team to assist on this. It's response to you. Because it will enable us to know what, at what date did this take place. At, at, at what date did this take place. Because for funds to be, to, 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 to be asked to be retained, that could have been in June, maybe it was at the end of June. So at what point? Because by June, if it was, if it was in June, at the end of June, then that also will help us because if it was the end of June, then we would have already passed the budget because the budget is always passed by 15th. So I think let us do that. But also in this type of arrangement, like we have put chairperson about finance, I think for them they don't write direct to parliament. They write to finance and it's finance after receiving like supplementaries that we need money for A, B, C, D. It's now finance to bring it to the attention of parliament for appropriation. They don't have the power to do it directly to get to us. But for me, I think our interest should now be, let us first of all get the communication, the letters. Can we have the letters now, or such that we are able to move? Because without those letters, we shall not be able to, 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 to move. That one will help us at what point, how did it move? Chair, Chair, the letters are there, and I would like to request just for time to get them ready. If they are not here today, they will be here tomorrow, but for sure they are there. Which department has custody of those documents, those letters? Finance. Finance. That's your interaction with finance. And confirm the documents are available. Like CJ said, please give us time and we'll provide them. We didn't carry them today. Okay, you're going to come with those documents tomorrow. That's you requesting finance for that money to be retained and finance writing back to you, giving the approval. However... What I still want responded to by you, of course, when we, like I said, when we invite finance here, they will walk us through how they obtained the approval of parliament. That one is not for you. However, what is for you is this section 14 of the public finance, no, sorry, of the URA Act. And I will quote a part of it. The minister may from time to time authorize the authority, that's your in writing, to retain the percentage of revenue collected by the authority as may be determined by the minister in order to enable the authority to meet its expenditure without interruption. But the total sum so authorized shall not in any financial year exceed the amount appropriated by parliament for the authority for that year and shall be set off against the amount so appropriated. What was appropriated was 534. This 34 that you asked finance to allow you retain and you received, at least as you say, the permission to utilize it is not embedded within the 534. 
that's where I want you to help me understand how that happened. Yes, uh, is it a build up to this, Honorable? Yeah, it's related to that, uh, mm. Chair. Chair, the 534 was for the previous year, 2020, uh, 2020, 2021. Then the 568, yes, the 534 was for the previous year. Then the 568.87 was for 2021-2022 financial year. That was warranted. They are, they are nodding in disapproval. Please talk to us. Thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Member. So, Honorable Chair, we take note of the URA Act um, and the retaining that is referred to in the Act is indeed what happens every financial year. The budget that is appropriated by Parliament, the Honorable Minister of Finance writes to URA and gives us permission to retain that out of the collections. This is because of the nature and the urgency of the operations of revenue collection. So that's why we do not wait for the releases from the Treasury on a quarterly basis, like for other institutions, for us to be able to run. Because there is no single day when revenue collection does not happen. Seven days a week, 256 days of the year, we are collecting revenue for the nation. So because of the nature of our operations, every year the Honorable Minister allows us to retain a part of the collection as approved by Parliament. And that is what referred to in the law. However, the second part of the retention was by way of a supplementary. It was not part of the appropriated and approved budget by Parliament. We had not spent this money because of the reasons we have given and we still had unfunded priorities. So we went back to the ministry, so to say asking for a supplementary. But because we do not come directly to parliament, it is the Minister of Finance. Mm, let me just finish this, then I can. It is the Minister of Finance that approached parliament. And that is the part that we are not sure of, and I'm happy, Honorable Chair, you've guided, that can be answered. But on our side, we could not spend money that was not approved by Parliament. So the first retention that we got automatically was as approved by Parliament, which was 534. Then the additional was out of unfunded priorities, and instead of coming to Parliament for a supplementary, we wrote to the Minister of Finance, who I'm sure came to Parliament, and after that gave us an approval to spend. Okay, of course, where you confused us is... Uh, you kept insisting, you don't know if they came to Parliament. Then earlier on you said, when you requested for this money, finance um, brought it to Parliament by way of a supplementary. So how do you know they brought it by way of a supplementary and yet you're saying you are not sure and so finance will respond to that. You see how you're confusing chair, us. Chair, and the chair, is, the chair. Chair. That, that, I think all these issues we're asking for will be answered when we receive the letters. If there are gaps which are not responding to when we receive those documents, we should be able to ask now supplementaries if they did not fulfill to us. So I think we need to move such that... Okay, so let's bring those documents mm. when we return tomorrow. Mm. And who had just submitted said they had some retention. Can he read the provisions that empower them to have the retention verbative here so that it guides the proceedings of this meeting? This is an accountability committee. We need evidence-based submissions. It is either yes or no. Whether right or false, we get them when we have the provisions read here so that we proceed well. Thank you. Chair, yes. Chair, 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 Honorable, Chair, just to supplement she raised the point of procedure. Let me respond to it. Honorable, actually the law is what I just quoted, section 14 of the URA Act. However, we are going to get uh, better insights when we look at the documentation. Because they are saying they were in correspondence with the Minister of Finance. Because Section 14 says the Minister can approve that they retain money. And that's why the budget, the 534 billion, 
of URA. It does not directly come from finance. When they collect money, they send less their appropriated 534, or whichever amount it is. All right? That's within the law. And one would presuppose maybe even the 34.7 falls under that. But we want to be sure they crossed every T and dotted every I. That's why we are saying bring those correspondences. We see them. And then when we eventually have the Ministry of Finance, because we shall have him here, he's the supervising minister for this entity, to respond to, among other issues, that particular one. Because we want to be sure Parliament was uh, not bypassed when it comes to appropriation. I don't know if that helps. Yes, Honorable Bukha. Because all along the Commissioner General has been talking about the detention of money and that the minister approved the detention. And now, after questioning him further, he changed it to a supplementary. And I want to know whether during the budget they did not know that the, 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 those amount of money was useful so that they are budgeted for in the main budget. Why supplementary? Because the process of requesting for retain, retaining of the money started before the budget was, was approved. So I, I, I'm wondering why, why it wasn't captured so that immediately after the, the, the approval of the budget, they come for supplementary, if, in, if, if at all it was a supplementary. Okay, again, maybe just for us, was that they submitted a bigger budget than the 534. However, Parliament approved only 534. So for them, they are saying what he did say is uh, they had catered for all of that. And so their submission was a bigger budget than 534, but Parliament only approves 534, and that's what they get. But why they will remain on the hook and not off, it is until we have seen those documents to be sure the process was followed the right way. Because if they are saying we sought permission of finance, we want to see was that sought, finance granted, under what understanding? Because initially the CG was saying we don't know if they came to parliament for approval. But then the same CG eventually says finance came to parliament by way of a supplementary. How, how, because you're saying you don't know. So don't respond what you don't know. Let finance tell us, okay? Because now you begin to assume. Because if it was ordered by finance that you retain it as part of your budget, that's against the law. Because your budget was 534. You can only retain 534, not 568. Maybe it can happen by way of a supplementary. But was it done by way of supplementary? That's what we shall establish. And then we pin URA and all finance. Yes, Chair, Chair, I think we need to proceed. Of course, we are already hinted on. Now, we know that the budget was 568.87 billion. Now, in that year, there was also unspent. They, they could not spend all that money. Again, go the previous year, you failed to absorb 34 billion. Now, when you added this to be added again, the level of absorption and absorption was high. Now we come to the question which honorable members had asked about. This money about social security. I think this is an explanation. In this table here, you are, you, are, you are giving those highlights about social security contributions. It's part of those which, which, which led to, to that and the uh, of 56. But now we are saying 56. But again, now that we are clear that 56 is for the 21, 22. But what was unspent is 125 billion. We would have needed all what that would add up to 125. You have only given almost a half of about 40 percent of what was unspent. You would have highlighted all of those others because we are remaining with about maybe 70 something billion not, not accounted for. These other activities you have given here, the question we are raising, from, raising members are raising from it is, is the issue of social security contributions. That's one. The second one, the other balance, we want the breakdown of the other balance 
for 51, 25, because you have only broken for 56. So maybe actually, Honorable, this breakdown is by the Auditor General's office, uh, not them. And the Auditor General told us they did a sample out of the 125, they did this sample of 56. That the others were several, several items with smaller amounts. Although we told them next time to indicate others so that it tallies to 125. Chair, yeah, I'm aware about that. That's mm -hmm. why I'm asking the source, the primary source, because they are the ones who have this information. <laughs> Yesterday we told about that, but because it's, not, it's, it's a big amount, 70 billion. So we uh, want to know those activities that suffered. And specifically for social security, Mr. That C. one can be explained. One, let, let me explain what. 7.4 billion for social security. That's money you did not remit. And I see here you're blaming COVID. Help us understand how. Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, let me ask my AC Finance to come in and explain uh, the breakdown of these unspent funds. G. And. Uh, social security contributions in that year we were supposed to recruit 700 staff uh, that process took nearly a year because it was a big number of staff and so the process was very long it was only completed in may uh, of 2022 and so the staff reported in june of 2022 so they were on the payroll for only one month, whereas we had anticipated, because we had started the procurement earlier on in the year, we had anticipated that they would be with us throughout the year, but this didn't happen. And so the unspent money under NSSF is because the staff were not with us, so there were no payments of wages, and therefore there were no remittances of NSSF either. So that is why that money remains unspent, because we didn't have the staff to allow for the absorption of those funds. Honorable Makabulindi, I think you had submitted. Chair, let me start by question. 21-22, do you owe anything NSSF? Yes, I'm asking you. 21-22, does NSSF demand anything from you? No, NSSF does for not demand workers? anything from us. So Nothing at all, up to now. So this was the anticipated for the new recruits? Yes, that was expenditure by way of paying wages and then their remittance, but they didn't come. So there is no remittance due. Okay. So the, this figure here, the 7 point, see where you inform us that um, we were meant to recruit this number of staff and we were meant to pay them this amount of money. Because that amount of money would also be unspent funds. Because the NSSF arises out of somebody's salary. So where is that provision of the salary, which also was unspent? So, Chair, again, um, during that year, having uh, realized that we didn't have the staff, and yet we had other needs uh, to, to take care of, we sought a environment from the Ministry for Finance and the wage element, a substantial part of it, was fired to other activities that needed to be done in that year. Yes, the letters will be submitted along with the, the submission. And, and how much was it? What was the yes. total amount? The total the amount was 20 billion that was fired from the wage allocation. Okay, we, we need uh, those documents. I don't know who on your team, Mr. CG is taking note of the documents which are recorded. Staff, 700. Is it true or not? 700. Yes, that was the recruitment plan. Okay, for, that was the plan. Yes. Can you provide for us the list of the new recruits and their salary so that we can calculate the social security fund that was required? Yes, Among that, the documents we have to get? Yes, it is possible. Chair, before I, I need a switch off the microphone, the CG, when you quoted the law, I was anticipated to see the challenge from the regular department. Unfortunately, they have come with one person in two. She's dealing with finance and she's dealing with the law. I don't know if that's the case in URA. Because she did not, the other person who was supposed did not challenge the section to go in detail, but referred it to the finance. 
I don't know how you operate in Are you the one in charge of legal activities? Uh, Mr. Chair, I can uh, make... <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if you allow, I will make a comment to that. Yes, ma'am. Who is this one? Because she came late. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I was waiting for the right opportunity to first introduce myself and then be able to make a submission. So my name is Patience Tumsime Rabagumia. I am the Commissioner for Legal Services and Board Affairs. On that particular issue, uh, Mr. Chairman, really, I think in terms of uh, the retention, the provision that we use within the URA is that the URA Act is our guiding document. So sometimes, yes, you might have conflicting provisions in other laws, as we shall see subsequently. But for this particular issue that we are looking at in terms of uh, the finances, is that we are looking at a Section 14 of the URA Act. Mr. Chairman and members, that is a section that we use. And it was crafted in this way because of the nature of operations. The Minister of Finance does authorize the URA to retain funding. So the question here would be then, did we seek authority from the Minister of Finance, uh, Honorable Chair? And then, and that is a submission that we will have to make to show you that indeed we requested for that retention and the Honorable Minister then did give us, and that is the basis upon which we used then to proceed and uh, utilize Council, the funding. Council, Chair, Thank you, Chair. Chair may, I, may I bring to the Director Legal to speed that uh, you retain what is appropriated by Parliament, not what is not appropriated. That's that what you true. retain. That is true, uh, my senior counsel, yes. We retain, <laughs> but this is a submission that we are saying that we then, when you write to the Minister of Finance, mm. Via either the supplementary, and that is a discussion that the Commissioner General was. Via supplementary, to. did you people write asking for a supplementary? You, you, you're confusing yourselves, and not us, because you see, your your, your budget was 534. That's what you ask to retain. Anything beyond that cannot be an ask for a retention. Yeah, councils, in, anyway, uh, council patients, because you see. Section 14 that you're referring to is to do with what has been approved, which is 534 billion. So maybe let me ask you, anything above that, how do you ask for that money? Because it cannot be retention, it cannot be Section 14. Honorable Chair, anything above that is that we'll then go to the minister, who is our supervisor, and say we have additional needs. And as a result of this, we need this is additional money that we have. So, Honorable Chair, then it would be whether the minister does agree with us and then you would have to use the provisions in the Public Finance Management Act to then come to Parliament and seek for that authority for us to be able to have the additional sum. Thank you, Chair. Let's, let's move Chair, on. Chair, because like we, we said, we this issue... To also enable to, to reconcile, to reconcile uh, those, 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 those issues. What is the explanation for the IT? Because also this under absorption, there are also a matter relating to the IT, information technology. The other one, you have tried to explain about the recruitment. What about now for the IT part of it? Because this is just procurement. If you have work, uh, work plan, procurement plans, does it take one year for you to recruit? So can we have that explanation? I know you are going to bring the other balance of the breakdown of the other six, uh, about six years also for us where we shall be able to interrogate, but for this, Thank you. unspent under the IT. Department. Thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Member. Let me ask the Commissioner IT to come talking about is the COVID period. There are two things that happened in that period. One, there was a global scarcity of microchips across the world. So the supply chain for IT technologies was uh, extended by most of the manufacturers of equipment. And it caused delays across industries. Uh, secondly, in the procurement processes for IT in government, there is a lot of procedure that we followed. And one of them is benchmarking. Rather, uh, uh, we got to do evaluations and, and, and visit the places where this equipment come from. And there was a shutdown of travel at that period. So a lot of disruption happened simply because of the COVID. 
Uh, as an example, we have uh, data center equipment in here. Uh, for us to travel to do the evaluations and see this kind of equipment before it is deployed here, uh, uh, we could not do that. And so these kinds of disruptions delayed the procurement, but also the supply chain itself was disrupted globally, and therefore the delays. Thank you, Chair. Yes, Honorable uh, Itungo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You. When the team from the Auditor's, General Auditor's, uh, Auditor General's office came to URA, did you have an exit meeting with that team? And the explanation you are giving this committee, did you give it to that team or you did not attend the exit meeting? Uh, we had uh, conversations on these exits and we submitted our, our our responses, but the, the team uh, reserves the right on what remains in this report. Yeah, can, can we, uh, CG, provide us with the budget, your budget of the 568 million, a copy of the budget? We, we would need it to enable us on the implementation of the outputs. I don't know whether whether yesterday we had asked to Auditor General to make some corrections. I don't know whether they have availed those corrections. This, this team can respond and then we see if there are any issues where we need clarification. Yes, Honorable Sivamala. 25 billion. Okay. Would it be procedurally right that they provide us with the breakdown of the 125 instead of the 68? such that we analyze everything. As the colleague has only talked, because they only an answered for NSSF and uh, some IT. But the unabsorbed funds are 125. I, I was asking that on the assumption that we have already the 456. So no, let they this provide. Now, this is now that, the balance. That is why I'm but, saying, would yeah. it be procedure right that they provide everything, we share a total for ourselves, and then see how to proceed. It's the same okay. thing. I think that's OK. It's the same thing, yeah, it's OK. The law provides that uh, any environment in regards to this shall not be more than 10% of the money allocated per each item. Can they make a statement on that, whether they followed this provision? So not be more than 10%. Chair, I, 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 I did, Maybe ask, what I did we... ask for the letter, and I had that question. I had to divert. See, environment is just a cool word to mean diversion. Are you sure of the amount? Chair, I can confirm that the environment was within the 10% allowed. How amount. much was the environment? For that particular wage, it was 20.4 billion from the wage allocation. I confirm. Let's get the letter and then uh, we'll be able to tell because you might find the letter even has a different figure from item A to item this one. And then finance responding saying it is okay, you can divert the funds. That's for to make some corrections. I've just received a copy of that. I don't know whether members have also received a copy. Of course, we would not have had time to go through them. I think you are here matching the outputs and the activities. Because uh, the Auditor General here says, I assess the implementation of the sample of three outputs that had been fully quantified with a total of 19 activities worth 253.77 billion and noted that no output with all its activities was fully implemented. The entity did not implement fully all the activities within the output. The three outputs with 15 activities worth 253.77 billion were partially implemented out of the 15 activities, the entity fully implemented five activities, fully implemented five activities, 10 activities are partially implemented, while no activity remain unimplemented. I think the question we're asking, what happened to the other, can we have all the 19 activities? Because we're talking about the 15 here. Before we put in the supplementary questions. Yes, CJ. 
Um, thank you, Honorable Chair, and honor to comment on this one. Is everything all right? Let me ask the Commissioner internal order to explain this. I think I need the question. In, uh, in this booklet, if you can refer to page five, and uh, if you allow me, Chair, I'll take you, I'll take the member through. Um, the Auditor General's observations, page, page five, yeah. Uh, the Auditor General's observations are there are 19 activities in total, uh, costing 253.77 billion, and uh, they indicate that three outputs with 15 activities worth 257 were partially implemented. Out of the 15 activities, the entity fully implemented five activities. Then the other 10 activities were partially implemented, while no activity remained unimplemented. Now, when you, when you look at our responses, we have indicated that uh, in order to improve and effectively implement all your activities, considerations were made to address the gaps through the following initiatives. So we have listed the initiatives, the close monitoring of uh, key performance indicators, the training of staff, to effectively execute their roles, additional staffing following the completion of the recruitment process, and implementation of new staff performance management system to fully operationalize the URA business plan. So below, we explain the status of the initiatives. Under domestic taxes performance for the period of seven months, uh, performance stood at 101.13%. And this was achieved through key reforms, reform programs like use of third-party data. May I? May I continue, sir? Uh, Chair, uh, I, I think before the commissioner goes ahead to give the actual answer, the question, why? What, what happened to have this? We are talking about the gaps. Okay. We are now accountability committee. Yes, we are not a policy making organ, so maybe you can, in a sectoral committee, you can give action plan, you can talk about it in your board. Just want to have an explanation what happened because the query is why. So, first cover that, then you go to the next step. Okay, if I mentions, uh, they still relate to item one that we discussed extensively, and the biggest impact was on COVID 19 which affected our implementation program. Uh, for example, if you look at recruitment, we have already explained that. There was a delay, uh, a suspension uh, in terms of recruitment, and we had to go through a lengthy process for interv I mean, interviewing the staff through an online process, which had not been accounted for at the beginning of the process, and that impacted our budget significantly. The Commissioner for IT has also explained uh, about the delays in procurements arising out of uh, the impact, again, of the COVID-19 and the scarcity of chips, microchips, that affected most of the IT projects. So what I'm saying, Chair, is that, again, activities that we, we planned to implement were affected by the same things that also impacted on the absorption of funds. And uh, the two are actually one and the same. I submit, Chair. Maybe in chair. addition. Chair, chair. Uh, I think it has a relationship with the issues which we raised about underfunding, which is affecting yes. now this one. But one, I wanted to now, for what is the status now regarding, because one of those which affected was the, the issue of the electronic cargo track, tracking, where the sale, you had a shortage of the sale. See, the electronic cargo truck expected at 25, but only achieved 7% of the total consignments due to the limited number of sales in the yeah. ESC countries and the exclusion yeah. of borders by Rwanda. Just a question for clarity. During COVID-19, 
when it was at the peak, many entities improvised ways of implementing the activities. Can they tell us the extent to which they failed to improvise, which impacted into this? Because many things were done online. Chair, I, I really wish to hear on this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chair. I'll ask the Commissioner Customs to give an update on where we are with the electronic seals and also the Commissioner IT to clarify further on the things that we are not able to do because of the lockdown. Thank you, CG. Thank you, Honorable Chair and members. Regarding the electronic cargo tracking, uh, it was sponsored. The funding was coming from Trademark, now Africa, by then it was Trademark East Africa. They were doing everything from maintenance, seals, uh, for tracking cargo right from the port of Mombasa up to our exit borders. So when they pulled out, it was government supposed to foot this bill. So at that time, there was a process of requesting government up to parliament to allow funding for procurement of the seals that would help us track cargo. Definitely, when Trademark Africa pulled out, trucks continued moving, and we had to track cargo to avert the risk. So that's why uh, when they pulled out, we needed 3,800 seals, and that is the request that we put. And I think that's the explanation I can give on electronic cargo tracking system. So, uh, we are now at 33% tracking. Chair, Chair I, I feel strongly we still need more evidence to that, to show us when exactly the sponsors withdrew to the evidence of that request so that we shall be able to know that there was no laxity in between if at all that happened. Thank you, Chair. But, but, but also, the 33%, uh, I don't know why I get the feeling that is still way too low. Because COVID is long gone for a very long time. We are only at 33%. What, what's the explanation now? Because it's tethered to what Honorable Ababiku is saying. The, the excuse, first of all, yes, COVID, okay, let's see how we justify that. But now, we are 33%. Why? Thank you, Chair, and Honorable Members. 33% is what the seals that Uganda government can afford at the moment. But because it is a regional electronic cargo tracking system, this seal is fixed in Mombasa. So when it is fixed in Mombasa, it is shared between Uganda, Kenya, and Rwanda. So that means each country contributes to the procurement of these seals. The 3,800 seals are for Uganda. So Kenya has also procured their seals. I don't want to mention the exact number. So right now when we are tracking cargo, we are tracking using Kenya electronic seals procured by Kenya, but transiting goods through Uganda. And so the percentage has grown to 67%. But for Uganda seals, 3,800 can only track 33%. That's why you see even an additional request is being made for us to track better all the cargo for 4,500 ECs to be comfortable. Chair, Chair, through you, I want to request the officials from Revenue, when they submit, let, us, let them submit with the interest of not confusing us. Because if you are, Uganda is mandated to contribute 33%, 33, why do you uh, submit in terms of percentage? Because as far as I'm concerned, Uganda's part is concluded. You cannot say 33% for Uganda, 33% for, 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 for Rwanda, and yet you did not mention it at the beginning. Because if you submitted that our mandate was 33 and it is concluded, everyone would understand and that question would not come. So as you submit, please, make sure you submit in a way that we understand and we don't take a lot of time. 
Yes, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I, I hope he has understood now uh, the issue of the, the seals and cargo truck, such that he doesn't get more confused. <laughs> may, 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 maybe you, uh, you needed to explain in detail to each of the, 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 the issue of the cargo trucking and the issue of the seals. Because I think the question which may even end up coming later is say, are those seals enough for us to for car tracking for all what comes in, in Uganda? Are they enough? Because now if you say a uh, trademark withdrew, how are we filling the gap? Or if they are funding, are they funding it to 100% for us to have all the seals? We don't want a situation tomorrow where the goods have failed to move because there are no seals. You know, in order to enable you to track, or oh, see a situation tomorrow where cargo headers are disappearing because you can't track it uh, electronically, because you can only possibly now rely on, on it manually, which also has its challenges. Would you want to speak? Thank you. Again? Thank you, Chair. I, I, I can quickly clarify that uh, what we have is not enough. We have made a request for additional seals. We think about 4,500 seals will be optimal. Because again, countries contribute according to their capacities. Not that every country contributes 33%. So as we speak now, Kenya contributes the highest number of seals. Uganda follows and Rwanda follows. So we still have a gap of about 1,200 seals, funds allowing. Thank you, Chair. P paint a picture for us. Um, what's the gravity of that? gap of about 1,000 seals, as you're saying. What does it mean in terms of tracking, in terms of, you know, potential revenue we can collect and so on? Thank you, Honorable Chair. What it means then is that we use the available seals to prioritize the high risk in terms of revenue. So we cannot allow, as an example, a container of textiles or batteries that pay very high taxes to go without tracking. However, on the risk scale, if we cannot seal uh, a container of raw materials that are not going to pay tax, we may allow that to go. So ideally, it would be nice to seal everything that is, has not yet paid tax. But where we don't have enough equipment, then we prioritize based on the risk. I, I want you to quantify it, because that also helps us to make a case for you people to be availed with whichever resources you need to have all those seals. Because I get the feeling, yes, you're saying you'll go after the high risk ones, but even these that are low risk, potentially, we could be losing out on quite a bit of revenue. To what extent? Give us an estimation. Again, that helps in our engagement, whether it be on the floor of parliament and so on, to say, look, this is how much we are potentially losing, but we can have that issue fixed if we avail these people all the skills they require. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I request that you, you give us time to prepare that and we submit it. Among you the don't people. have a rough estimate because you're, you're dealing with these things on a daily, really. Commissioner Customs, can you comment? Thank you, Chair um, and Honorable Members. The, the current rate of, uh, of red channel, that's where the Commissioner just says they are high risk red channel is standing at 27% of, of 100. So that was the high risk we, in our system called as CODA. When it comes to yellow, those are the ones which are medium risk. They are the majority that come, where we do documentary check. Stands at, it oscillates between 56 to 60%, depending on the risk profiles. So the majority now which are non-risky are the ones where we use the, what we call a manual seal. Before Trademark supported us with electronic seals, we are using these manual seals for 100% of the cargo. So when they supported us is when we started the process of e-sealing for monitoring. So that's why we are saying if we can do 100% e-sealing, electronic sealing, that would be more comfortable. Of course, the chairman is not very happy that uh, you people use red as high risk, then yellow is medium risk. <laughs> but we'll pick that up on another day. Yes, uh, Honorable Cooper. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. We go to... Yes, Honorable Sibamala. 
Chair, according to what I, I, I got from the Commissioner Customs, 33% is what we are, is, is what we are seeding. And, uh, but the total number of what we are tracking is 67%, where 34% is provided by the Kenyans. Is that right? Does that mean that we, we depend on the Kenyans for our own goods? And how are we paying Kenyans for this service? Huh? Okay. Thank you, Honorable Member. And uh, we are not paying any money to Kenya for this service. Are it is depend? a shared platform where each country contributes. Uganda so far has contributed 3,800 ECs and Kenya has contributed more. Because when cargo is leaving the port, it does not stop only in Uganda. It goes to even other countries. So that's why they contribute more, but Uganda is not paying anything. We only paid for 3,800 ECs. What I'm asking, are we depending on them? Are we depending on their seals and their information for our own to track cargo through our own country. What if they do not seal a particular thing? How are we sure that the Kenyans are sealing everything? Okay, thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, at a bilateral engagement, uh, we have what we call a shared risk management register. So we send a list of Ugandan cargo which must be sealed. The Commissioner General said our high risk is this, our medium risk is this, our list is this. So we have staff already deployed at Mombasa Port and Dar es Salaam, URA staff, who do the sealing in partnership with our counterparts in KRA. So our risks are taken care of at the port before the cargo moves. So we are sharing a platform with yes. the Kenyans? Yes. So we have our staff working for KRA? No, they are working for Uganda, but they are they are deployed at the port of Mumbai. Uh, they are deployed at KRA? Yes, in the facilities of KRA. Chair, Chair, I'm Chair, I'm supplementing just for clarity. You know, this business of shared platform, whereby each one contributes what he can without necessarily determining that Rwanda, Kenya, or Tanzania, or Kenya, uh, Uganda, you have to pay this amount. I'm looking at the situation like now of recent, of maize, of milk. If politically anything happens, you, you mean we shall be at a higher risk? Because when we are in harmony, where, when we are in honeymoon, everything is moving well because we are sharing this platform. Assuming there is something politically not going well, like you have seen the case of maize, milk, and what have you, so we are now risking. So, so in other words, how, how bad dressed are we? Because yes, it's a shared platform, it's an East African community and so on, but uh, it's, it's like the three stones that do the cooking. If one breaks off, the others can't. So when those situations do come, how safeguarded are we? Thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Platform, we are all very safe. Why we are facing common risk? Now, Give an example of a consignment of textiles heading to Uganda. If this consignment is dumped in Kenya, it is the Kenyan economy that will suffer. So irrespective of the country of destination, all these countries of transit, we are exposed to that risk. So it's in the common interest of Kenya to monitor all cargo that has not paid tax as it transits through their land. Just like it is for us, for cargo transiting through our country, that has not paid tax. Same with Rwanda or Burundi. So, honorable members, I'd like to assure you that this is a common sh shared interest and risk, and we are, we, we, we are buttressed to a very big extent. Of course, it is good that everyone makes a f an equal contribution. So, for example, if KRA contributed less seals, Uganda would be affected. But to this extent, what they have contributed and what we have contributed covers 67% of high risk cargo. And we look forward to the support of Parliament to help us cover 100% of risk. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chair, can we go to 1.4? 1.4.
Okay, and by the way, just to remind our guests, uh, we have tea at the back, so please feel free to go grab it. CG, I was just establishing, there's a, a, a suitcase here. I, I want to interaction 2017 requires an accounting officer to ensure that all planned developments, development, all planned development partner disbursements under his or her vote are included in the vote budget estimates that are appropriated by Parliament. However, it was noted that the authority received the project funds to the tune of 101.5 billion. These funds were received directly from United Nations Capital Development Fund for undertaking specific activities. In addition, a review of the bank statements also revealed that the entity received funds to the tune of 113 million 555 from the World Bank. I, Auditor General says was not provided with information that the above funds were budgeted and accordingly appropriated by Parliament. Failure to fully budget for all the funds distorts budget management and creates a risk for multiple financing. Management explained that they were to adhere to all the laws and policies while obtaining any external financing going forward. What we get from here is they did not follow the law, they did not budget it, so we just need confirmation from you. First, first of all, why did you fail to produce documents? Can we now have the documents such that Auditor General looks at the documents and asks? That's the starting question. Yes. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair and Honorable Member. Let me ask the AC Finance to comment directly on this one. So in the year 2020, there was an agreement signed uh, through the Ministry of Finance for the provision of this money from the World Bank, and that document has been attached as an appendix. However, the disbursement where, of funds where, where? took longer. Make, make reference to it. Where is, where is that document? Appendix, um, appendix 2 and Appendix 3. Appendix 1 and Appendix 2. Then there's also 3. 1. Or Annex 1. It's a subsidiary agreement between the Republic of Uganda, represented by Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, and Uganda Revenue Authority. So, so the, why did you... Now that you have documents, why did you not present them to Auditor General? Because the Auditor General say you failed to provide that information to Auditor General. Because, like the Honorable Member said, you always have exit meetings. Why did you fail to provide this to the Auditor General? Chair, the documents were provided, but probably the report had already been uh, issued at that point in time. But the documents are historical, and they were available at that point in time. <laughs> were they not available at the time of the audit? or what? Because if the documents are historical, <laughs> they should have been available. They were available, Chair. So why were they not provided to the Auditor General? Probably a lapse in, in document movement, I could say that. But uh, we apologize for that and the document is now available for review. It's, it's because, always been there. Because this is a very huge mm -hmm. amount of money. You, as you see, 101 billion, then there is 113 million US dollars. Actually, the contractual sum, or the amount in the subsidiary agreement, is 333,000 US dollars. That's about 1.2 billion. Yeah, but you know, I, I'm not buying the argument that you know, lapse in transferring documents and so on. Did you people attend the exit meeting with the Auditor General's team? Because you see, there is an audit first, and then there is an exit meeting to clarify any issues, to avail any documents that were not availed at first. So, at all those processes, for the documents not to be availed, it's as if there's something you people were trying to hide. Chair. Yes, Honorable Kambale. Chair, thank you very much. What the, the answer she has given us, in fact, makes the query even stronger. The query is of budget financing. There was already an agreement, which you say was already signed. It was the real justification 
why that money should have been captured during the budgeting process. So you, you gave up, you, pre, you, you prepared a budget and you skipped to indicate that money where an agreement had been signed. So the question is, why do you spend money yet you have made us parliament approve a budget and you have skipped that money in the budget that we have approved? Meaning, you received that money, you spend it without parliamentary appropriation. This is a big crime. Honorable, co Honorable colleague, I beg your indulgence. Can we first establish the, the circumstances, first of all, why they fail before we come to that? Because that's really the second part of it. We ask first of all, that's the question we are first of all asking. Then we establish what we also need now, because now you are making us to do the audit now. Because now we need to establish whether what is in these documents is the exact amount that is also record, uh, 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 recorded by, by the auditor general. We were wondering how, if the documents were not given, how the auditor general was able to get these figures here. But yesterday, told us somehow how that was happening. So I think that's the first thing first. Why were the documents not available if you had the exit meetings? And they were historical in nature, like you have said. That's one. Then two, you will have to give us the total figure. What hear from you, the total figure from these resources. Then we shall come to the question now of budgeting. It was for 333,000 US dollars, as indi indicated in the, in the appendix that's, one. That's from which source? That is from the World Bank. OK. Yes. And there is a specifically designated account uh, for this money from which uh, the funds were actually expensed. The second... Did you give that account to Auditor General? Yes, that account was provided to Auditor General, but they can also confirm because... No, they, they are, are saying the information was not provided. Anyway, proceed. Okay. Then, during the process of setting up uh, the World Bank portal, there's a portal in which the funds are disbursed, a World Bank portal, and it has a fairly long, long process no, before of setting there, up signatories. No, no, one at a time. Can we finish with the figures? Because there were two sources. I want you also to confirm the other figure. Because we have the United Nations Capital Development for undertaking specific activities. Then there is World Bank. Now, World Bank, you are saying it is 333,000. Yes, US dollars. But what you have in the Auditor General is 113,000. 555 US dollars. So yes. we, that's why we want now to reconcile. Okay. So I was going to that point, the point on the 113. So if you could allow me to get back, there's a process of setting up this portal under the World Bank in order to access that disbursement. Now the World Bank was changing a system at that time, and so this process took longer than it ordinarily takes. Meanwhile, the agreement had been signed and activities uh, had commenced uh, taking place. Some of these invoices became due for payment under this agreement before the disbursements actually came through. So in order to manage uh, the expenses at that time, we disbursed funds from what was available within the operational account. And so what appears as 113 that is looking like a new source of funds is actually not a new source of funds, but for the invoices that we had paid that were due against the projects under the World Bank, that amount was being returned to the operations account because we had spent it as the process of clearing with World Bank continued. So that is the 113, and it is part, it is a subset of the 333 US dollars. Go to, go, go to the United Nations. United Nations, we had uh, an arrangement to support capacity building with uh, entities, um, local government and, um, and KCCA. And, and KCCA. So URA was the leader entity to provide this capacity building in, uh, we call it the, the TADAT training, the tax administration diagnostic tool, yes, assessment tool. So URA received that money in order to undertake that activity and to make the necessary disbursements under this. 
So again, there was um, an agreement entered into with the, the United Nations Capital Development uh, for disbursement of that amount. 101.5 million. Million or billion? Million. Million. Because what we have here in Uganda shillings, 101.5 billion. Million. That is million. In Uganda shillings or in Uganda shillings. Auditor General, 101.5 million. Uganda shillings. Yeah. Yes, sir. Honorable Kambari. So, 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 okay. So, so what we, we're, what we're talking about here, that, so the total money you received that year is, is supposed to be 333,000 US dollars. But what was disbursed was 113,555 US dollars in the operational account. Is that yes. what you're saying? Yes, and we returned that back to the operational account. But we, we eventually we spent the whole uh, 300, I think we only did not spend six thousand US dollars, but again, I can't, we can provide the detail of Chair, the utilization. Auditor General, which documents were not given to you? Such wanted was uh, approval. Please take note of, Madam, take note of the documents. Have you picked the number one document? Sorry. Sir so, I don't disorganize. So, Amala, why are you disorganizing? The, one, the, the, the member. You meet her after the conference. Order. Apologies, Chair. Don't allow those members to okay. structure um, that issue. Sure. Two things are critical. Nounding officer. Yes. Any expected grant, you're supposed to have that as part of your budget estimates. Yes. Yeah, we're coming to that chair. Did that happen? Because that's what these people are not provided yes. with. That's where the, the auditor is. general. Mm. Yeah. That's why, that's why I'm asking first, let them get whether, which documents they didn't provide to them. Because here now we are talking about there's an account. Was that the details of the accounts, the operations that account given to you? where these agreements, the contracts, that's why I'm asking them which... We were not provided with information that the above funds were budgeted and accordingly appropriated by Parliament. So it was uh, evidence uh, that this money was appropriated through Parliament. That is the information so, that we're not provided. Chair. So that's, that's the issue I was raising. Why was this money not captured in your budget? Because it's supposed to be appropriated by Parliament as well. URA or any other entity does not receive any money from whatever without parliament knowing and capturing that as an appropriation because you're not a separate you know, private entity. Why was that not done? Then I pick what Honorable Kambari wants to raise. Mr. Siji. And uh, as far as I understand, that was captured and uh, there was an element of delay. Maybe let me again ask AC Finance to clarify. Uh, 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 that's why I say if it's captured, because the other one is what we appropriated. Because now if this is captured, then it should have been more than 500. Your budget was more than that. Or are you telling us it is part of the 568 billion? Chair, I would like to request that we are allowed to uh, confirm because this agreement was signed in 2020 so that would apply to actually that year which was before I kindly request that you allow us to cross-check and make a submission to is where you might have maybe laws that are conflicting but in this particular case honorable chair that is not what we're saying but for the record really that URA does follow all the laws we are a law abiding corporate citizen but for this, uh, so Chair, to move on, just maybe these arguments, why they were not submitted, really. That was unfortunate, and I think as the SC Finance has explained, maybe some of these documents were lost in transition, because these are documents that are kept within the legal department, because this is an agreement that we signed. So we have an inventory, really, of all the agreements. So I think we apologize for the fact that uh, the team, the finance team that was dealing with the auditors maybe was not able to avail these, but there's nothing that we are hiding, uh, honorable chair and members, because these are documents that were indeed signed off by Uganda Revenue Authority and they're available uh, that can be adduced. Chair, chair. Thank you. and lastly, chair. Last, uh, chair, last, uh, chair, I know finance minister, the supervisor of revenue. Could it be a conflict of interest that the finance minister who has a conflict in your section is also the authority that allows you to continue the way you want so that in the future we can recommend that it shouldn't be Minister of Finance 
Because if it was another corporate... Section 43 is very clear. Management of projects funded by loans and grants, all expenditure to be incurred by government on projects which are externally financed in a financial year shall be appropriated by parliament. This is the act. And you people, you are, you are part of us. So I don't see why we should talk much on this, but he's going to give a final response. But the act is very clear about that. Parliament is supposed to appropriate any money is used by our agencies, whether it's from consolidated fund, whether it's from World Bank, we are supposed to be in the know. Okay, Honorable Mwada. MP Shadondo East. Uh, Chair, I've gone through this document, but I don't want to believe that there is connivance among officers of URA to benefit themselves from public resources and fail to disclose. Although I'm inclined to believe, given uh, the revelation by the Auditor General, this is an audit of the year ending June 2022. I want to presuppose that the auditor is competent, the Auditor General is competent, and he was auditing the year 20. 22. Secondly, uh, uh, the Auditor General specifically mentions that part of this grant were for specific activities for the entity. And, and the Auditor General discloses that the Auditor General audited the bank accounts or statements of the entity. That's URA. You cannot now come and turn around and take us back to history when the Auditor General is very clear and categorical in terms of the bank statements he audited or the entity auditors or the general, and the amounts for these activities. Chair, I, I'm inclined that we need to also see, uh, find out these specific activities, because the auditor general gave in summary. It, it, from URA, what are these specific activities cited by the auditor general that the money was meant for? Secondly, when you look at the agreement you are referring to, it's a bit not in tandem with the amounts being mentioned here. The amounts mentioned, away from the 300 plus, the auditor general is mentioning uh, 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 U.S. dollars, uh, it's, it's, the, the amounts actually vary. They're not in tandem with the ag agreement you are citing. So, Chair, I'm inclined to invite the committee to inquire into these spe specific activities as well and whether they were actually done. But from the language of the Auditor General, the money was made for this particular uh, uh, period audited by the Auditor General, and the explanation from URA on record is management explained that we are trying here to the laws and the policies while obtaining any external fi financing going forward. Why didn't you, by, at that point, refer the Auditor General to the agreements or any other documentation? Because what is cited by the Auditor General is you only committed to adhere to the law, meaning you admitted that you failed to adhere to the law. There can't be any other evidence to give. Which, point, a, which point are you on? I'm on uh, page seven of budget financing, yes. non-disclosure. Yeah, yes. yeah. When you look at the, 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 the narration from the Auditor General, that management explained on page 7, management explained that they were to adhere to the laws, to all the laws, and policies while obtaining any external financing going forward. Why didn't you at that point explain to the Auditor General any other reference to, as to uh, specifically for this agreement? The presumption is you got this money, used it the way you wanted, and you failed to disclose intentionally. We also need to ascertain what are these specific activities because the auditor general is very specific. He audited the bank accounts and probably in reference to the audit period. There can't be an explanation to the contrary. So you, you, you see where the challenge now comes in, URA. Um, you're causing us to imagine too many things by not following a very simple, did not avail them. It's, it's actually not just about the agreements, but to show that this was part of your budget items. And then you back it up with the agreements, but neither of the two. So assuming the agreement was lost somewhere, again, you did not indicate that you had budgeted for this. That's where the challenge is. So now you can see how we are becoming creative and imaginative because of a procedure you did not follow. Because when you don't disclose something, the assumption gets to be, is there something they're hiding? and all of that. Anyhow, um, on your end, provide all the documents that we require, and then 
as a committee, we shall make our conclusion because it's, it's clear. Yeah, yeah, provide details of these activities. When you look at page seven of the audit report, that, they, uh, he, that this money was for some specific activities within the entity, what are they? So that we, can, we rule out with, uh, that the money was shared among us themselves. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, please bring that breakdown. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let this um, brief point that the agreements were availed to the old, to the auditor general's office. They audited all our accounts, and we can provide the list of all activities handled. I think the only element that was not provided, and I beg to be collected by the auditor general, was approval of Parliament that this was part of our budget. And this, we can step back. If we find it was not, we will still come uh, to, to the parliament and you know, admit that we did not. It would just be an oversight. But I want to assure you that this money was received. It was used for the activities, like the TADAT training she was mentioning that it was for. And all these accountabilities were fully provided to the Auditor General's office. So we did not conceal any agreement or any document. It's that approval, which now I suspect that maybe it was not there. And if it was not there, it was because of an oversight on this procedure, not that we had anything to hide. Thank you, sir. Honorable Kupo, yes, sir. Uh... Mr. Chairman, I have gone through these documents and I've not seen copies of those agreement. Maybe if they are available to the committee, it would be able to answer the queries that honorable colleague is raising here, that you let us know the agreements got lost. Uh, that, that's taking us for a ride. It's impossible. You are able to lose documents and lose agreements. That's taking us for a ride. Chair, I beg that it's scrapped from our, our, our record. You can't just come and narrate that the agreements probably were lost. Chairman, That's provocative, Chair. Uh, let's have order. Order, order, order. That, order. that is in charge of our taxes and revenue. Yeah. Uh, I am not going to have anything scrapped because, yeah, we need that as evidence on record, which we are going to use in our inquiry, in our report writing. Uh, so, because otherwise then, I'll be the one to explain on behalf of URA when I'm presenting a report. This is what we found. And then uh, I explain on their behalf, no, we need to capture all their feedback. That's important. Yes, yeah, Honorable Kupa. Yeah. I was asking for the UND it's under, appendix. It's annex, annex three, page, page nine. There was an URA and the uh, UN Capital Development Fund. Okay. It is now, also after the agreement that we are referring to. Thank you. To. Now, that's why I was earlier on asking for your budget, such that we know whether this money was in your budget, your authority budget. Two, can you show me finance, of course through the accounting officer, uh, Chair, where is this money reflected in the accounts? The accounts. Can you show me? Because I have your accounts here. I've been trying to locate that figure on the correct corporate the money is reflected in our statement of financial performance, yes. where we have expenditures noted. Which page? We have the corporate expenditure financial statements. So, which one? But you, you gave us copies. To just find that number and highlight it. Eh, which break are you talking about? You want to give yourselves a break? <laughs> so <laughs> you see, we are not the only ones assuming. <laughs> you people are also assuming too many things. Anyhow, you see, but, but so. No, we, we want to know uh, where it's captured because otherwise it will be a, a wrong reflection of the accounts. Even here, if, it is if, not if, there. If it is not there, if it is not there, that's why I was saying maybe I wait. Since so I need to look at your accounts, because otherwise it give, it will not give a true picture of the financial statements of the authority. For that's now, why, we are assuming it is not there, except if eventually they find it, and then they will yeah. <laughs> point us to it. Both in the budget, you show when you get us the budget, show us the budget, and and, and also in the financial statements. That's why I need to find. Get, yes, get, Chair, get we, shall, to us. we shall and show that. And also get to us what was your total budget. Proceed. Yes, uh, Honorable Mpini. <coughs> Chair, uh, authority, I am a bit worried that in the expenditure and also in the, in the budget, 
what does this mean? Because if revenue is in charge of collecting our money, and they are not declaring monies that they are getting from different sources, are we sure that our money is not also spent on source? Because they declare what they, they, they declare what they collected. So it means they can also declare this and spend another money on, uh, at their own. Because if the, the grant that has been given and it is indicated it is not in, included in the budget, what does that mean to the money that they are collecting on behalf of this country? So, CG, again, you see how you have left a lot of room for a lot of assumptions because of a procedure which should be simple. But when you skip that procedure, then we end up making too many conclusions to your detriment as, as an entity because now you see the concerns of members, legitimate concerns, really. You know, and they're not even saying that's exactly what you do. But they are saying, are we sure about this? Are we certain? That, that's a lot of room that you have left for assumptions. But anyhow, we have taken note on our end. Uh, we'll see how we recommend. Because, you know. Clarification to mm. my colleagues that we have uh, chair an audit report for the revenue account, what they collect, fear too much, because there's already a report on that. So when we reach that revenue account audit report, there are also issues. Still, we shall raise them and we shall get responses. So we should not over fear. Because okay. the, audit, the, the account was audited also. You know, you see the, the, the fear. Account. Honorable Kambale, the fear emanates from the fear emanates from simple procedure, which if not taken care of, then the fears begin to arise. Honorable Nangoli? Uh, safe. Areas. I remember when we asked the SC whether they have some areas in regard to NSSF, and she confirmed that indeed they do not have. But when I've gone through the financial statements, I see here on page 43 of their financial statements. Huh? Financial statements, just check your financial oh, corporate? statements. Corporate. Just corporate expenditure and financial statements. On your page 43, corporate, yes. Corporate financial expenditure and financial statements. Financial position. On your page 43, on your page NSSF areas, you will confirm that as of 1st July 2021, there was an outstanding balance of NSSF not remitted of 43 million 846,542 Uganda shillings. They paid 513,711 and the balance as on 30th June 2022, that is last year, it was 43 million 332,831. I would like to get a justification on the record whether this is categorized as the NSF of areas or it was cleared. Because in the financial statements, it shows that this money has not been remitted to the beneficiaries' accounts in NSSF. Additionally, Chair, additionally, yes, please. now that uh, this figure is indicated under uh, non-current liabilities and uh, by the end of 2021, there's 43, by the end of June, there's, there's 43, there's the end of June, there's another 43, it implies that uh, you have not been complying. Otherwise, this figure wouldn't appear here under non-current liabilities. So when you say that for you, you comply and these figures on your financials are indicating that we have these uncleared bills and hence follow under non-current liabilities, it's like you are, not, you, are, you are not reconciling what you are telling us. Okay, let's get a quick response. Had any unpaid NSSF for the year that we were discussing, the year 2021-2022? That's how I understood the question, but I can be corrected if I got it wrong. 
Yes, so for that year, and that's the answer I gave, we do not have any funds that have not been remitted to the NSSF. Now, in our books, we have got NSSF areas, and this is a historical number that has been with us for, for several years. We had a season, probably before I even joined the authority myself, when um, we had an issue in the computation of NSSF, and we remitted less at that time. Over time, the management got into a plan to actually make good the under-remittances that had been done during that time. Of course, this involves reconciling all of the records together with NSSF. This number that remains outstanding relates to only figures that we have not been able to reconcile between ourselves and NSSF. And so we don't have the particulars of, of um, uh, the, the responsible uh, persons. So it is an outstanding but historical. It doesn't relate to 21, 22. So that's the, the answer I gave. Effort is made from time to time. That number was a lot bigger when we started. Um, it was probably more than two billion, but we went into a plan for several years, and annually we allocated money to be able to clear it. C can we get commitment on when this, because this is a small figure, on when this can be sorted out? If you're saying you have come down from up, yeah. let's get commitment from the accounting officer on when this can and should be cleared. Chair, Chair, I'm sensing. Let's, let's first get this commitment. Thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. I would like to commit that as soon as the reconciliation is complete, this will be handled. As you've indeed observed, it's not the amount. I think it is the contention of whether it is true or not. Once that is revoked, Honorable Chair, we will When is that going to happen? When, when does it end? I, I the reconciliation guided. cannot be unending. I, I can be guided by the SC Finance on where we are at the reconciliation and how quickly you think we can resolve this. Thank you, CG. We can commit to completing it by December of this year. Uh, December seems... I to work within the three months. Yeah, because this is not a very big issue, you know? You see, the challenge is once people's monies are not remitted, they lose out on interest. Are you going to pay their interest also? Hmm? Mr. CG and SE Finance, are you going to pay the, uh, the should have accrued interest? Because, you see, every month people earn interest every year generally course, you know, uh, on, on their NSSF savings. So if a certain amount is not remitted, they are not earning that interest. Are you going to pay that accrued interest? Honorable Chair, let's try and work within the shortest possible time so that we are able to pay uh, what we owe. Okay, so let's do that within Thank three you, months. Sir. Thank you. Because otherwise then we are going to obligate you people to pay even the interest. Because that's, that's people's money. They have worked, their savings is what they retire to. So if it's not there, this committee and parliament about having fulfilled that. Thank you, Honorable Chair, for the guidance. Yes, Chair. That. Yes, Honorable Chair. Chair, I do appreciate you are aware of the mid-term payment for the workers have been getting complaints. Some apply knowing that they are going to get lump sum good amount and they get little amount because of that figures of yours which have not reached with accrued interest. So I think in the three months we received the situation. <laughs> okay, yes, sir. Thank you, Chair. This money is for also, it's your money. It's not ours. We are pushing us to put, because tomorrow when you get out there, you need that money, or even when you are still there, like he's saying, it's midterm. It's for your own benefit. Yes, 